Today's project is this Samsung model HP-54253 plasma television. The problem with this TV is that HDMI port number one is no longer functioning. In fact, it hasn't functioned in probably five or six years. When the port initially failed five or six years ago, I did wiggle the connection cables and tried different cables and that sort of thing, and uh, nothing happened. So I thought an internal driver chip or or a firmware issue would come up or something like that, and I've just been living with one HDMI port ever since. Um, but recently, I had been fooling around with the TV a little bit more, and uh, I tried the port again just to see if for some reason it had miraculously fixed itself. And what, uh, what I found was that when I plugged in a cable and held it in a certain way, the port would come alive for a split second. So what I think now is that maybe I'm just dealing with a bad solder joint on a circuit board. So I'm going to take the TV apart and have a look and see if I can fix that. What you're looking at now is my Roku 3 box which is plugged into HDMI port number 2. And this is how I usually use the TV. What I'll do now is move the Roku over to HDMI port 1 and try and get the port to activate momentarily just to kind of demonstrate what I saw a few days ago. I've got the Roku HDMI wire moved over to port number 1 and you'll see here if I cycle through the inputs the TV does not find anything in HDMI port number 1. It just cycles between S-Video and over-the-air broadcast. But if I stand behind the TV and hold the wire up at a certain angle and then flip through the inputs, you should see that HDMI port 1 will be active. And there's the Roku in HDMI 1. Now if I let go of the cable, you'll see the image should disappear. I've got the TV disconnected from all the inputs and power, of course, and I've got it spun around now so that I can work on it. Here's a close-up look of the input panel, and the port in question that is the problem is this one, HDMI 1. Here's a look at the information tag on the back of the TV. This shows the model number and some other relevant information, and also indicates that the TV was made in May of 2006. So as of this filming, the TV is about ten and a half years old. The next thing that I'm going to do is remove all of the screws that hold the back on the TV. And there's quite a few of them. There's some around the outsides. It looks like there's some here, some bigger ones. And there's a couple down here around the input panel. I think I've gotten all the screws off the back of the TV here. There are 24 screws of various different types holding it on. As you can see, I've taken the TV off of the bottom stand and I've got it leaned up against my entertainment cabinet there. Um, plasma TVs shouldn't be placed uh, horizontally, meaning either on their face or on their back, uh, for risk of cracking the, the glass screen. There were two more screws hidden underneath the, the stand that I couldn't get at without lifting the TV off of the stand. So now that I've got the TV apart, I think the correct way to remove the back of this thing would have been to remove these longer screws first. And these are the ones that went here and here. These are what hold the TV to the base. So these should have been removed first. The TV can then be lifted from the base with the back still firmly attached to the TV then placed in this orientation and all the remaining screws can be removed. So now I believe that this back should just come right off of here. Now I have to be careful of the secondary input panel that's over here on this side. There don't appear to be any screws holding it on. Here's a look at the TV with the back off and the board in question that I'm interested in is this board. You can see the HDMI ports here are on that board, but <clears throat> covered by this sort of metal shield here. So this metal shield is going to have to come off. 
these screws that are on this PC monitor port to help hold it on. And then over on this side, there's some RF gasketing tape that looks like it may be holding it to uh, the side over there. So I've got these two screws removed, and I removed the RF shielding tape from over here. And it looks like this thing will just now sort of pivot out. There's just a tab on this end of the tray that goes into a slot on the TV frame there. So now the circuit board is exposed and I'm able to see both HDMI ports. And they do appear to be surface mount units. This is the bad HDMI port and this is the good HDMI port. One thing you may notice that's different is this one sort of has plastic ears on either side. This one did too. This is some sort of a support thing. But I've pried this one off of here, just kind of was able to gently pry it off and down and get it out of the way so that I could see what was going on. What I'll try and show now is that this port can be wiggled up and down and this one is rock solid. Uh, what I've managed to do is I've managed to get in there with my loop and I can see that none of the pins have solder connections anymore. There's solder on the pins, but it's not connecting to the pads on the circuit board anymore. Uh, there's also two through-hole ground pins that connect to the shield body of the connector itself that go through through-holes in the board, and those are no longer connected either. I'm not a very good surface mount solderer, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway since I really don't have anything to lose. The port's not working so I can't really make it any worse as long as I don't damage any of the other components around here or cause any problems there um, I should be okay. So I'm getting prepped to re-solder the HDMI connector now. You can see that I've got my uh, hot air rework station ready to go. What I'm going to try and do is use the hot air rework gun first. I've got my smallest tip on there and I'll reflow the signal pins on the top of the HDMI connector first and then once I get those reflowed, if that works, I will then use the regular soldering iron to try and touch up the uh, um, ground pins on either side of the connector. Another thing I've done here just to give myself a little bit of light, I've got this small flashlight on this wire. I disconnected this wire, put the loop of the flashlight on there and reconnected it, hung it and positioned it down so that I can see what I'm doing. I've also taken some Kapton tape and put it over all of these discrete components that are here on the board just as protection so that I don't end up blowing them off the board with the heat gun. It may not be visible but I've also got some flux on these pins and ready to go. Because of the way I'm set up here I don't have enough room to get in here and work uh, with the hot air gun and have the camera sort of on the connector while I do the solder. So you may be able to see here that the signal pins are all now reflowed. Uh, I've looked at this with my loop and I don't see any shorts. Everything looks like it's connected properly. The solder fillets may not meet IPC standards, but they should be good enough to make this port work again. So now I've got the soldering iron heating up and getting ready so that I can try and solder the two ground connections on either side of the connector body. So I've got the ground pins reflowed as best as I can and again I used the, my soldering iron to do that job and just added a tiny little bit of solder and when I put the soldering iron in there I tried to heat the board more than I did the shield of the connector so that I didn't melt uh, any of the plastic that's inside the connector. I'm not sure if that's high temp plastic or anything like that. It's probably not. So uh, Again, I wanted the heat on the board anyway to try and get the solder to suck itself down into that plated through hole and make the connection with the pin. The connector now feels pretty solid. Uh, it feels uh, you know, just about as good as this one. So now I think I can start the reassembly process. The first thing that I'm going to do is reinstall this plastic support behind the connector, just like the one uh, on this other connector. Next, 
up, I'm going to remove my light source here by disconnecting that wire, removing that, and reconnecting this wire. Now, I suppose there's no harm in leaving this capped on tape on here, but I am going to take it off. Next, I'll reattach the shroud that goes over the input connectors by putting that tab in the body first and then tilting this over and lining it up with the input connectors. And now I'll reattach these thumb screws that are on the PC monitor jack. This little piece of shielding tape no longer has any uh, adhesive on it. However, the metal itself sort of still does, so it's kind of sticky enough to stay on there. Next thing I'm going to do here is put the back back on the TV. So now with the back loosely aligned, so I'm going to put one screw at the top just to kind of hold it in place. Now what I'll do is reattach the two bottom screws that are on the edge of the case here that would otherwise be hidden by the base. With just three screws holding the back on, I'm going to now pick this up and put it back on the base so that the TV can stand by itself. That way I'll be able to plug it in and test it before I insert all the rest of the screws. So I've got the base mounted back on the TV. I took those four longer screws, installed them all, and tightened them up. But I still haven't installed the rest of the screws on the back of the TV in case I need to take it apart and reflow that joint again. But I've got it ready to go, and we're going to find out together whether or not this worked. I've got the Roku plugged into HDMI 1, and I've got power to the TV. So I'll turn it on and see what happens. And now I'll switch the input. And we are on HDMI port 1 and I have a picture. So that is a good sign. So now I'm going to wiggle the connector a bit here and see if everything stays the way that it should. And it does seem to be working properly. So it looks like this solved the problem. So what I'll do now is disconnect everything again, spin the TV around, and finish installing all of the screws on the back of the TV and that should pretty much wrap things up for today. I think that's going to wrap up the repair of the HDMI port on this Samsung HP 54253 plasma television. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching.